Hello, Joey V here. It has almost been two years, and now I am finally making my move on my late 70s Oster Daimler Inter 10. It first started looking like this, primer only on the top tube and the bottom bracket. Two owners ago it was used as an indoor training bike, and as a result it was drenched with sweat and it was never cleaned, so that sweat corroded through the paint. The previous owner tried to make a project out of it, but she was definitely in over her head. I don't blame her, I felt the same way trying to figure out how to match its impossibly deep burgundy color. But now I'm at the screw it point. It's full Reynolds 531 butted, and it deserves to be out on the road. The idea of using spray tint came to me last year. Before that, I have made some tests of every spray paint I could get my hands on, but I found that burgundy was the best and started with that as a base. It was just a matter of figuring out how to darken the color. The heaviest glosses couldn't do it, and trying to lightly mist black over it created a splotchy look. I turned to eBay to find some spray tint, because my local automotive store doesn't have it, and I found this product, VHT Blackout, which I thought was a spray tint that cartooners go for, and I found it to be, found it to be even more blotchy when sprayed. Now fast forward to a week ago, I came up with the idea of spraying the VHT stuff into a cup and then paint brushing it on, spreading it as thin as I can. Worst comes to worst, I'll just sand it off and start over. Maybe I'll even uncover the Inter 10 decal and properly work around it. For what it's worth, spray tint doesn't spread well. It's very fast acting. I should also add that the VHT stuff eats away at plastic cups. I then tried to mix VHT with burgundy and painted that on the bottom bracket. Now under low indoor lighting, both results look okay. In outdoor lighting, phew, both results are bad. It only looks good from far away. The VHT plus burgundy created more, a more purpley color, and I did a bad job anyway. Oh well. Next, let's take a look at this headset. This headset is a little bit weirder than the more modern one inch threaded Campagnolo that I have dealt with. There's a top nut and a toothy spacer in between and a 10 sided adjustable race with teeth. Underneath there are caged bearings, 14 count. The bottom cup features the same caged bearings, 14 count. The grease is sticky and unpleasant. I decided to take it outside and subject all greased surfaces with foaming engine degreaser. It took many passes. The top race appears to be an immaculate shape, which of course it would. The bottom race appears to have very light brindling. The caged bearings have the most difficult to remove grease. This is where my project took a slight turn for the worse. Engine degreaser wasn't knocking out the packed grease in the retainer, so I used acetone. But acetone was no match for it. So then I got the bright idea to punch the bearings out and use the toothbrush to really get at it. I made both a degreaser pass and an acetone pass, and it worked. But getting the bearings back in was a whole nother matter. I got one set in okay, but I totally manhandled the second cage, and I don't trust it anymore. I immediately went to my local bike store and they couldn't match the retainer, but they suggested that I try a smaller set of caged bearings. I don't remember what diameter the bearings are, but I think they are 5 seconds of an inch at 22 count. I packed them, put them in, and then screwed the adjustable race on. I can't say that I like the sound when I spin the fork, but I can live with it for now. Finally, I successfully get the friction shifters on. These are early Suntour Cyclone friction shifters. Not as pretty as Campagnolo, not as futuristic as Shimano Indexed, but it gets the job done. I learned that even the older shifters take a modern shifting cable. And there you have it, an entire day devoted to this build. Thank you for watching.